This is going to be part two of the motor series in which we take one of these three motors. Last time we took the 120 millimeter EDF, we put it on a boat. I'm not even going to mention how that went. What the f But this time we're taking the big brushless motor and what I've done is I've blown up my last project and just made it bigger. TPR tire which is flexible and it's just gonna go over the hub. Now that's the tire, a chain drive. You can see on the motor, we have gears, overkill axle that's going through everything, bearings. I believe these are called end bearings. Now for the construction, I have aluminum profiles in different sizes that we can use. What is this, a snow racer? We're gonna use the same electronics as on the electric surfboard. So four of these batteries, these are six cell lithium polymer batteries. That's gonna end up being a 48 volt battery, 16 amp hours. Speed controller, a flyer 400 amp. Now there are quite a few mounting spots for the motor, but we'll take the aluminum, reinforce the structure, making it easier to mount the motor. And also I'll do the same thing as last video. I just melt studs into the tires so that we can go on ice. But the hub will be somewhere, somewhere right here. The 3D printed parts are very heavy. It's by design, the heavier something is, the stronger it is. Yes, that is how it works. The axle is 25 millimeters. I read up on go-karts and apparently they use 30 millimeter axles. So I thought 25 would be okay, but that's just way overkill. Then there are two bearings and the main gear that's pinched in with four screws straight into the plastic, but they are quite long, so hopefully it will be okay. The green 3D printed hub was designed and printed so that it would be as strong as possible. I don't think it was a very good decision to have square uh, sharp corners. Having a circular shape is usually stronger. I've given this some thought and I might have the tire further back and the motor all the way up here for better ground clearance so that the springs can always keep a load on the tire and get better traction just like we did on the electric ice skates video. With a what the hell could go wrong approach, I used my superior skill and luck to nail all the measurements first try. So here's me cutting aluminium extrusions. Now I took the 25 millimeter axle and pushed it through with the end bearings, but I noticed that the wheel could go left and right quite a bit. So I 3D printed the gray adapters that now limits how far the wheel can go left and right. And that works really well. But this is what it currently looks like. PCBWay offers the best custom PCB prototyping services. But did you also know that they do injection molding, 3D printing, laser and CNC cutting? With their instant quote feature, you can simply upload your model, in this case a 54mm impeller for my electric surfboard. You can choose from SLA, FDM and SLM, which is a laser melting a metal powder to make metal parts. They also have an instant quote feature for their custom PCB, so go ahead and try it right now at PCBWay.com. It's a little concerning having such a big motor and the chain of death so close to your back. Mm -hmm. 
With the drive working surprisingly good, I grabbed the screw, heated the metal and sent it straight into the plastic. The reason for heating it is so that the plastic doesn't crack, which now in hindsight worked really well. 240 studs may seem a bit excessive. I guess my thinking here is to distribute the force on all the studs. Instead of having larger but fewer studs, we're now distributing the forces for the simple reason that the plastic parts may not be as resilient. I 3D printed this to hold this piece of acrylic to protect me from the chain and the drive. We'll also hook up these shock absorbers. They're way overkill, but they look good for the thumbnail. I've arranged for this to be tested in a stadium. Apparently, they don't mind having their eyes shredded. The only thing I have left is connecting the ESC. The only drawback is that we don't have a twist throttle. I'll have to use one of these electric surfboard controllers. That's fine. If I didn't think I was gonna crash before, I'm definitely crashing now. Little did I know that the crash was just about to happen. With less than 12 hours to the one-time opportunity in an ice stadium, the electric speed controller catches fire. Pay attention that I'm cutting the motor wires instead of unwrapping the tape. The second largest electric speed controller in my arsenal gave nothing. My god. This follows with four days of this and this. After confirming with this tiny EC that it definitely was the motor, I did get the monstrosity to turn, making this even more of a mess. Here are some of the speed controllers that I've been testing the past couple of days. I know for sure that this one worked before, but the motor wasn't spinning very smoothly. So I think this might have been incorrectly programmed, which really only leaves me one choice. The only issue I see with this motor is that this is the kind of motor that you start using when you want to die from your own invention. <laughs> And after changing the motor that I absolutely 100% definitely without hesitate, not a beef. I'm, I'm about to flip. But then the copper wires inside the motor is insulated. They pretend these wires so that you can attach your connectors. Whenever I mounted this or the other motor onto the sled, I cut those wires off and attach the speed controller, but these are insulated copper wires. Basically, I'm stupid. After scratching and also melting off the plastic insulation seen in this shot here, this ESC was in fact not working. No way! I remounted the black motor, checking the rotation and then also adding a seat. At this point, I did have a chain tensioner, which is why it sounds like an engine. I later removed this though, and I was even invited back to the ice stadium. So here are some clips from that day. But that didn't work either. The only thing that really worked was doing this. So I came back the same day with hopefully something that would solve this problem. And now it started to work really well, even though we were only using 24 volts. That's using only one out of the four batteries. So now I added more weight and put all the batteries together. All right, acceleration test on 48 volts. The ice wasn't long enough and I never hit full speed, but here are some clips of me trying to go as fast as possible. You could get it to turn left and right if you leaned a lot, but you would need a larger space just to make a full turn. Then I met this guy that let me record him with the drone.
Thank you very much for watching. Consider leaving a like. It tends to make the video a little more popular. So I would appreciate it very much. Have an awesome day. Bye.